John, welcome. I'm so excited to have you as a man for the 59 because a lot of women applied and submitted to share their wisdom and experience with the 59. But for you as a man, um, I know a little bit about the 59.6 because my husband has it twice in his design. Wow. So twice, the 59, wow. <laughs> twice the six. So I know a little bit about it. But for you, it is in your culture with the line two, which states it's in partnership and it's your environment. But before we go into all that, I would really like to get to know you just a little bit. So if you could share a little bit about yourself before we go in. I would love for you to. Sure. No problem. So I am the eldest of five children. Uh, so I'm 41. And right now I work as like a facilitator, so coach, mentor, uh, consultant for all ranges of people, men, women, all walks of life, all kinds of um, job prospects and walks of life. And then before that, I was 17 years in the film and TV industry cool. in, in corporate. So I advertising motion picture film and I love that. And I could see, I needed to see a bit of a sea change. So I started doing this work. Um, I live in Maroubra, which is a suburb in Sydney to the beach. So I love going to the beach. I love having ocean swims. Um, my work also takes me into the body. So I, I do body work as well, so massage and uh, deal with childhood trauma, inner child stuff, which is trapped in the body. And that's really helped me just heal myself and heal anybody else and my partners as well. So my partners can feel that space that I've done work around my sexuality that makes them feel very comfortable. Wow. wow. Yeah, I'm already hearing the serpent and in the field and the... Wow, so let's go into that. You know, the playmate wants to play, so let's play. <laughs> so, yeah, we know about the shadow and we know about, you know, the gift and, and um, the city states. But um, I read a little about what you wrote in the uh, submission. So I really feel, um, because it's in your culture as well, and you just shared it already a little bit, how does this 59 uh, benefit you in your culture and in the work that you do? There's a benefit. Well, what I see in in the in the transparency, in particular, um, people just feel at ease. So when I'm when I'm being as open as I can be, as it really puts people at ease. When I share about my past, when I share about what I've done, um, and people also want to just share with me. So there's something about I just create this space, this energy, whatever it is. And the people just open their hearts to me. And I've never told anybody that before. They'll just say, John, I've never, I've never said this to anybody before. I haven't even shared this with my, my, my clinical therapist. So I'm like, okay, there, there's something that's in this. So it's, uh, it's, it's very penetrating and very safe at the same time. Um, I also see there's a, there's a, a component where I, I could take advantage of that. Like this, this is very easy to connect to people. It's like, I, straight away, I can allow my, my sexual shadow to come up and take advantage of that. But it's when I allow that, that this is a gift. This is, this is something that's, that's for me to bring to humanity. And there's enough, there's enough people taking advantage of other people. Let's just, let's just honor it. What does this person have to tell me that they, it's in their deepest recesses of their heart? So you're ready. Uh, I feel like you've been in the gift state for a long time because you were aware of, yeah, the shadow that you can take advantage of that trust that you send out, that comfortable feeling that the 59 gives me, at least the people I know with the 59, make me feel very at ease and lovable, that I'm worthy and, you know, all that. <laughs> totally, totally, totally. So um, it's definitely present, definitely present. Yeah. Mm. And when we talk about more the personal stuff, because the 59, you know, it has this big vital energy and aura field around it. And I can kind of guess how it would be when you're very young and, and when you maybe when you go from, you know, being a child to adulthood and all those hormones and stuff. Could you share a bit about that? You have any totally. So for me, 
um, I, I was raised in a, in a religious family and I was very afraid to be intimate with women. So I was a virgin till I was like 26. And yeah, right. So for me, I was very much a late bloomer. And my first sexual experience was with a married woman. And in that, there was like a, there was dishonesty there. So I still feel like I was in my shadow in that stage. So the, the more work I started doing on myself and uh, looking at um, why people are attracted to me, what is this attraction to me? But the, what, what, what is there? Like, what is it about me? And being able to own, there's something about me that people like, like to be around, like to talk to. And, and also being um, not listened to in that same space, like finding someone that can listen to me the same way I can listen to them has been a, <laughs> an agitation for me. <laughs> so that's, that's, that, I, that's how I'd say it's played out in, in my, my adolescence, like puberty to, to more adulthood is, is trying to, finding a partner that, can listen to me and, and being able to be honest about that like hey you're not listening to me hey you're not presence there's been an ongoing journey for me because i'll just see it the presence will just go it disappear like i was talking where did you go <laughs> yeah so for you it felt it feels like in relationship when when the intimacy doesn't come from both ways it kind of pulls you away from the attraction so then you pull away your attraction Hmm. Yes. Yes. I can recognize and, and relate to that intimacy on, on a vocal level. Like I talk to my husband, like we really have intimate um, sharing about our deepest thoughts and even the contemplations, you know, being in this work, of course. But, you know, he has to be open for that. And I'm open to him about his business. So that way we have this balance. And he mentioned to me, and that's why I loved it that you brought it up, that he said to me, if we wouldn't have these conversations, I don't think I would be with you anymore. But now I can relate it to the 59 because you just mentioned it. And I go like, wow. Because, you know, the 59 has this shadow aura, you know, from Ra being only about penetration in the physical level. And, um, you know, knowing my husband's story and history, yeah, he was like that. He just wanted to, you know, can I fuck it with every woman? <laughs> <You know? laughs> and and he, is, um, he was honest about that. And um, But now knowing that level of intimacy in, in conversations, yeah, so, so I feel... You have that because you wrote that. You have that with your the, the woman that you are with. Um, how does that show up in your work? Because, you know, the line two is also about marketing and you can relate very quickly. And I do feel because it's your culture that the people, mm, yeah, they attract to you and want to have this conversation, maybe even about the ideas and their inspiration. How does that work? Okay, so great question. I live in a house with six other people, so like a, a share house, and they all come and speak to me about their ideas, what's going on for them, what they want to do, what they want to achieve. And, and I love that. Like, I love the depth of the conversation um, and also them coming to me. Like, I, I get, I feel that the sensation of pride. Like, oh, they're coming to me. They must respect me. There's something about me that, that I know that I will listen to and offer advice around that they know is like, I'm going to give it my best. I haven't, I have no stake in it. It's purely about advice and feedback and, and gift for them. Um, where else would it, does it appear in my work? Yeah. People find my work very, well, my work varies from like poetry to podcasts, all kinds of stuff. And everyone finds that, Oh, this is really deep. There's something going on in here that, that sometimes their mind, doesn't comprehend what they're reading but they can feel it there's something something's going on in me i don't quite understand what's here but they just like it they go oh this is different so that's how it, it, it plays to an advantage in in my work well, there i see just another connection because you have the 59 6 but you also have the 22 and 12 which is about the grace in the poetry and music and yeah, having these moments of wanting to connect and want to be solitude. You recognize that? Solitude's a big one. Yeah, if I don't get time away, I, I, I feel quite depleted. 
Um, and there's no art that comes in. There's nothing comes in from the divine around what can I create next? So, yeah. Mm. But I love to bring in the six as well because I feel when you have this whole channel, this, this intimacy or wanting to penetrate somebody's aura or they want to penetrate your aura because it, they're attracted to it, you can create conflict. You know, it goes from conflict to diplomacy and peace. Um, when you think about that, um, where can you recognize that in any kind of partnership you've encountered in your life? Yes, where can I, where, 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 a lot. Um, so when I, I can, I, I, in that penetration, I can, and I've been told, I can be quite evasive, like invasive. So I will see that there's something that's emotionally upset about the person and I will pry. I will like, what's going on for you? What is there? What is like, like poking like a, a wound? And sometimes they're just not ready to talk about it. So being mindful, okay, now I, I need to say this in a way that I, I, I'm bringing attention to it because I love you and I care about you and I see some distress there and I'd love for you to air it. Um, and it can be received as, why are you so nosy? Like, stop, get, out of, get out of my face or get out of this. Um, yeah, that's definitely, that's, that's present. Yeah. And how do you deal with that? Do you feel like it's some kind of awareness you need to be aware of each time you encounter a new person or even with people you already know that there's a balance so there's a moment within like within my authority and my being where I'll, I'll speak and then whatever the reaction is like i take a little bit i take a little bit i'm not going to take it personally but i'll take a little bit of feedback because like, was this was this correct and just fine tune what this my in intuition says or my my way of being says about that action I love it, love it. So I want to go to the relationships because I, the 59 is all about relationships. And for me, it also feels like the 59 because it's the most vital energy coming from the sacral that a lot of people want to tap into that energy as well because I feel you've got a lot of, yeah, a lot of energy to, to create because I also feel the 59 is pure creation. Even it's not about babies, it's about creating and then you having it in your culture line too. It's in co-creation, the partnership. So I already heard that you had a lot of uh, things that you do. So I, I do feel you have a lot of partnerships in that as, as well. So could you share some? Totally, totally. So there's, there's many people that I create with or give feedback about what I'm creating to, um, especially family. So like I'll give, I'll ask my family for advice and they'll give me feedback. Um, also in the context of relationships, um, I can't remember if I mentioned in, in, in the, what I sent you that I've, I've actually, I'm, I'm a sperm donor and I have four children in, in the world, in Australia. Um, so that I did that in my, my early, my early thirties, I did that. Um, so that, that in, in context of like procreation and creating, I'm like, okay, I, I need to do this, whatever this is. That was left field for me. Um, uh, I'll also add in, in the, I don't know if you're familiar with the, the sexual blueprints. Mm. Um, there's like a, a blueprints around sexuality. And anyway, so there's a few, there's five different archetypes. And when I, check myself out in 2018 i was like a shapeshifter so there's like a part of me i didn't really know how to connect so i'll just be anything to anybody just so i could get connection mm -hmm. and then the more i've explored this 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 like the 59 this way of being i'm more energetic so like in relationships i do I, there's a there's a feeling of uh, are you safe to me and then in that i'm like okay now i can open up and that's it in, 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 in business partnerships, in creative partnerships. There's like, how do we gel? Mm -hmm. How much can we share? And then I know, oh, this is, this is correct. I can feel my whole, my whole central nervous system is relaxed. I'm like, this is, this is a relationship right now I need to nurture and take care of. It's going to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Has that answered your question? Yeah. And, and I also feel the six coming in there again. So if you feel conflict inside, like a constriction, your 59 doesn't want to give its energy. So I love it. 
And mm. I, I, I never heard about the sexual archetypes or the the, the kind of a body graph or, or what is it? Could you share? Because I'm intrigued now. <laughs> it, or, or what is it? Could you share? Because I'm intrigued now. <laughs> it, totally, totally. So um, there are, there, it's, a, it's a survey where you punch in like your, your sexual deep, like your, your, what you like, like how you, how you express your wants and needs. Um, um, or if you're afraid of expressing your wants and needs or fantasy or what you kind of like. And, and in that, there, it distills down to five specific archetypes. There's like shapeshifter, there's energetic, there's a few other ones like kinky. Um, but, but in that, it can, it can give you a blueprint of how to expand on those. So um, and I like them because it's like, it gives me new ways of thinking about sexuality. Like it's such a taboo topic. Sexu I, I see is like sexuality. So it's yeah, more, more, more things to talk, especially with a partner, because you can both talk to it. It's like, hey, you know, this is my blueprint. I'm a kinky. This is what I like to do. This is how I like to express myself. And it just gives that platform of, of safety and transparency around, ah, this is what I want. This is what you want to do. Do you want to do it too? And yeah. Huh, yeah. So um, I'm just being open here and I'm just going to ask if you don't want to answer anything. I just say so. <laughs> <laughs> bring it, bring it, bring it on. brought up the taboo about sex and the 59 okay in its base it is about sexuality and the tantra and the tantra for me is is when you sit with the person it maybe you have a conversation but this this building up energy and then it goes into the physical and that you already has explained a little bit that is that what that's what you like first you would like to be intimate in another way before you become sexually active with your partner right so um, may I ask if you did this kind of test with your partner right now and, and how did that go? Were you the same? Were you different? How did you meet in between? Right. That's a great question. Um, my, my partner and I did do this recently, actually, and um, we're both energetics, which means we do prefer like we do prefer the, the, the energy component and, and, and the passion and, and the time the time to climax, not so much the climax itself. So there's definitely a, a bit more of a yeah, tantra component to this. It's slow, like, and that's our default. And within that rainbow of sexuality, there's all of the other ones as well, like the kinky and the forbidden and like the taboo and like secret and like um, out in the wilderness or whatever. It's just like, it's all, it's all in the mix, but our default was, was energetic. So there were no differences between you that you had to meet in between, like uh, you would like kinky and she wouldn't, but you know, you have to meet each other's uh, needs or <laughs> want, right? <laughs> but you were kind of the same or were there differences? But by, by the survey, we were the same. However, I feel like the more we explore ourselves, the more like we, we expand this emotional container and what's what we're capable of and, and pushing the limits, like pushing the edge, like, but like the longer you're in relation, the more it kind of gets stale and habitual. So I was like, well, how do we, like, how do we maintain this? How do we invest in this? So I'm sure this relationship's um, just over a year now, and um, so we're still in that that that, that honeymoon. We just come out of the honeymoon phase, and now we're like, this, this is a bit deeper now. Let's allow this this commitment, this devotion to each other, and in, in what we want to grow with. Yeah, and maybe even building that that honesty of being honest with yourself do i dare to share my fantasy or my wants and needs and if i share it do i really want to do it that comes up for me because we share me and my partner my husband we share a lot of fantasies but sometimes i just say yeah it's just a fantasy i don't really need to do it <laughs> right i hear that that's that's powerful i think even just vocalizing it gives it a, a power of its own like it for, for me it removes the shame around it right. so it's like straight away it's like well, you can feel like that tension i don't want to tell even this is my partner like do i want to say and as soon as i let it out there's like this, this relief of like you know it's out it's transparent now i'm not holding it in it's not in my shadow i'm not fantasizing about it anymore it's like ah, now you know yeah. <laughs> yeah because i feel we can judge ourselves for our fantasies and we're going to be afraid of what the other person thinks of our fantasy. If I say something that I feel is 
crazy or, or you know, not appropriate. Uh, the other person must think I am crazy or a uh, like a, you know, I can't think of a sexual word right now. That's not appropriate. But but you know what I mean, right? Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So in your other relationships that you had, how did the sexuality go there? Was there, could you be transparent and open or did you feel kind of shame or, or even afraid of being judged for the things that you would like to do? Yeah, great question. So the relationships previous, it's like, the, it's like a, I've matured in each relationship. Like I've like taken, oh, I didn't try that in my last relationship. Um, but there, there were, it's it's so varied. It's just it's so varied, Karina. Like my relationships, so different types of women, um, different work, walks of life, different degrees of sexuality and sexual appetites. Um, uh, and I feel like there's been some some relationships I didn't need to say anything, and it was just we just knew what we both wanted in the moment, and it just felt so right. Um, some relationships would require a bit more speaking and then some relationships I felt quite unfulfilled and then not able to speak to or not feeling like I could speak to whatever I want or needed to go out of my own self-consciousness or I was too afraid to hurt the other person. Like they, they were either had some form of um, either physical disability or um, energetic depletion that they could not... Um, be sexually active this, their, their vitality was not high enough to, to to go where i wanted to go so it was like okay you know I, I love you and i still love them like all of the women that i've been with i, I still love and not all of them still talk to me <laughs> <laughs> so the, I, I hear some old hurt which i understand and and i've always been willing to receive whatever's present for them because i get it like i'm i'm, I'm not perfect and there's hurt there and so, yeah, has it answered that answer your question? Yes. <laughs> and uh, I love that you, you bring up kind of the exploration that the 59 wants. It just wants to explore all different kinds of sexuality and intimacy. It just wants to explore what is this and what is that. And like you said, or you mentioned that in each relationship, you learn something. So I even feel that the intimacy with yourself within that understanding even expanded because you had mm -hmm. so many different or many <laughs> you had different <laughs> it sounds so awful like many <laughs> but the relationships or the women that you were with um and now i lost it <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, I just take my time now because I'm getting all kinds of I'm going to have a drink of water. I'm going to have a drink of water while you percolate on whatever's there. Well, the exploration, and again, I can, I can relate back to what my husband shares. It's sometimes he doesn't even understand or he didn't understand why he was attracted to some kind of women. Because when he looked backwards, it was like, well, she's maybe not, she's not that pretty or she have thick legs or she, her face is like this and I really don't like it. But there was something there that he wanted to explore. And, you know, when, in, when you look at the human design part, what they say about the 59, it's also your genetics wanting to look for the other part that is so different than your own. Because when you have the genetics of you and a, a completely different genetic from the other person, you get this new person when you create babies, right? So it's also, you know, the procreation to, in order to maintain uh, the human race. When you think back about your partners that you had, do you feel it might be something like that as well that dr driven your, your 59 towards a certain person? Yes, totally, totally. Um, whether it's been like hobbies, I think my, my first, my initial relationships were always someone that's exactly like me. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, there's something that's not correct here in that, like having someone exactly like me that was super safe. Um, and that longer those relationships progress, there's something that's missing here. Um, in fact, that, that relationship I'm thinking of, she said, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not an experiment to you. There was definitely a part of me that was like, 
crying and prodding in a way that was cold. She received that as cold. And I, I feel like I was quite cold in that particular relationship. Uh, and um, and as, as the relationships progressed, like the more and more variation came in where I am seeing more women that are, um, they, 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 kind of, they complement my blind spots mm. and they can see me in a way that I can't see myself. I'm like, wow, that's, I didn't even see that. I didn't even see that I was even capable of that. So, um, and there's that, 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 that molding of whatever the third creation is. I definitely see that. Um, and even, even in, 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 in business and in partnership with, with partners, we would do as, as a, a third thing that gets created within the relationship that sometimes the other person wants to go and do. Like, I, 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 for some reason, I attract projectors. So my, a lot of three of the partners that I'm with are, I've been projectors. And, um, and in that, they, they go and do their own thing. Like, I teach them about being projectors. And so, oh, wow, this makes so much sense to me. Like, uh, why am I working like nine to five? It's exhausting for me. It's like, yeah, it's because you're this. Um, so there's, there's always this third, this, this third thing that happens, um, whether it's a, um, I, I don't have any children with any partners at the moment, except for the, the sperm donorship. Um, but the current partner I'm with now is the first partner that I felt like really super, super, super comfortable to have children with. Um, so yeah, it's very different for me. I, I feel like I'm ready to actually be a father and bring a creation into the world that's under my responsibility, under my, my care. Wow. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah. Again, that brings, you know, not a lot of questions, but I, I just love this conversation because it brings yeah. so much. Yeah. It brings so much to the service about, about the 59 and the diversity of that 59 energy. And I love that you brought in the projectors as well, because I also have a lot of projector friends. It must be the manifesting generator energy. I don't know. <laughs> but somehow I see with them, they search for partners that are very vital. So again, the 59.6 is a very vital force. And, and they somehow, of course, they, they miss it. They don't have the sacral. And it feels like they are especially attracted to people like you with the 59 because of your vital energy. And they say to me, I have the greatest sex ever. And then, and then I ask them for their, their birth, date, birth data. And then comes out that they have the 59 or the 59.6. So <laughs> let's see what was happening here with you. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and like off, off, off in that, like I, I do have that's a reputation for me. I have a lot of pride around being able to satisfy, and then also, but also in that, not always feeling satisfied myself. So it's like it's like okay, cool. Like this is a, this, I'm being able to honor that that's a gift for for me to give, and like hey, that's what I'm here for. So this is the, this is the kind of the body that I've chosen, the, the blueprint that I have. But just have fun with it. Why? Why, why don't I give this to someone? So that's that's where I've been. I've taken that. Yeah, I do feel that's why it didn't work out because you were just giving your energy and that not energy came back. And then maybe the difference with your partner now is that you feel it's like a giving and receiving within that energy field. Yeah, mm. that's why it works. I also would love to know more about what I almost want to say drove you to become like the sperm donor and and give your vital energy to life itself to people that could maybe not have children with their own partner or wanted to be a single mom what was it that brought you to that beautiful gift because you you give people your creation a part of you yeah yeah so thank you and thank you for honoring it like that thank you for, for seeing that for that's that was my intention was being able to gift like, what i am um, and like my, my genes are, are, are so my, my mother's from the Caribbean um, and my dad's from England. So I have like a mixed heritage of like South Asian um, and, and European as well. So I get, I get, I, I love, I love my skin and my mix and my features because it's very unique. Um, and in that I was like, why am I, why am I being so stingy? Like there was a point in my life where I was like, I don't want to have kids, like blah, blah, blah. So why like, there's people that do want to have children and they want like a, a mocha, like a mocha mixed baby. So I'm like, cool, let's just put it out there. Let's just, let's do this. So yeah, it was just like, 
having having the genetic mix of of the Caribbean and English is good for the gene pool. So it's like, pick like be out there. Um, so that was there was a m- lot more logic in my decision making. And now when I reflect back on it, it's like no, there was actually something that was in that. I I didn't know about human design when I did that, or all 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 the gate all gene keys. I did not know. So that's like wow, that's I did that. So yeah. Yeah, I do feel that your genes were calling out. We need to procreate, and then you, then, and then they asked your mind, "What do you think about that?" <laughs> and your mind went, "No, yeah, if you want to do that, sure." <laughs> I love it. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Love it. So, what is the big reason for you? How it feels inside of you that you do feel that you are ready to procreate with your perfect woman right now that you want to mm-hmm. take on the responsibility of raising a child of your own mm, great question i um, it, it, it's a, it's a responsibility to be able to raise a child in a world with parents that have addressed a lot of their shame around sexuality and being able to speak to sexuality in an empowered way um, and in the shadow of humanity in an in empowered way. Like it's not so much humanity has got all these issues. It's just that there's a shadow that's just when we, we bring the willingness to look at it, that we can all be at peace and in, in synarchy and transparency and we can bring all of this stuff to have a, like a heaven on earth. It just requires that willpower and encouragement to, allow a being to be a being. Uh, so that's where it's coming from. It's like, and that's time now. Like there's so many beautiful systems like, like the gene keys that just give you that foundation to explore your humanness. Um, and then I have a partner that also loves gene keys as well. So it's like, there's something that's, and, and exploring her own sexuality as well. I do, she's actually in the next room doing a tantra um, group workshop. Um, in in her bedroom. So oh, we, we sleep in separate rooms. Projector generator. So um, it's it's yeah, it's so beautiful. Like it's just it's everything's just really it's a beautiful experiment at right now. So it's like okay, next step in the experiment. Yeah, yeah, that's the fifty nine again. Let's experiment <laughs> and try it out. But I love that you say that because I'm into conscious parenting as well. Uh, I have a daughter that is almost twenty four. Um, my, my husband has a, a son of 25, so we both had a child with another person. We've discussed about, you know, how about, you know, us two, we are so close and you want to have this love baby, right? <laughs> but then we said, well, we've been through a lot already because of the responsibility of having a child and raising it and what it does to your relationship, because you have to be really strong in order to survive (laughs) bringing a child to an adulthood because it takes time and energy away from the partnership. So we discussed it and uh, we've been married for seven years now, just for you to to know. Um, (laughs) And uh, we chose us and our intimacy and uh, we have a very good relationship with both our children and, and together. So we have this family, although it is a mixed family, right? But um, yeah, I, I, the conscious parenting, how I see it develop right now is that, you know, bringing in the human design and the gene keys and the people that are working with it and now also applying it to their, to their children and to their uh, upbringing, how they raise them by order of what is their design, what is their energy type. When you know that, it, it, it makes it even easier to, to, you raise your child, right? Totally, totally, yeah, totally. Energy type, huge, yeah. totally. Manifest the manifesting generator, like generator project, all of that. Just like, yeah, it just gives them so much more, so much more permission just to be themselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you you already discussed that with your partner that uh, okay, when we gonna have a child, when we are gonna do this. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> already talk about that how you want to raise that child or yeah, we have not spoken about that we have not spoken about that i think it's, it sounds like it's a very constructive conversation to have um yeah 
Okay, so we'll get back to you when, when that happens. <laughs> get back to me, yeah, like right now, so that we, yeah, we live in a share house. So on the, we've both, got, we've both done vision boards each, and then we've both done a combined vision board about where we want to take the relationship. So, um, yeah, we're looking at where we want to purchase next or move next or whatever. It is. So it's, there's space for possibility in where we move to next. Yeah. yeah. I feel a lot of openness in that also that you really are both are open uh, yeah, on such a deeper level on, okay, again, the wants and needs. And, and it's funny that, you know, when we go back to your 59 too, in your culture, you're even doing it in there, in your own home uh, with your, yeah, with your woman. Uh, okay, let's create a vision board. What are your wants and needs? It's like creating this environment together for the benefit of everyone, for for yourself, for her, maybe and maybe a baby or or not. But yeah, totally. And I totally agree. Like my, I feel like honoring the individual is very, very, very important, and allowing them to experience whatever their journey is as well, and honoring what my wants and needs are too. So encouraging that to grow and fruit. Like, what do you want? Like, what do you want to explore? Like, just give yourself permission. Like, this is your experiment. Like, in, enjoy. And, and also putting the boundaries in there that aren't so constrictive that it's suffocating. And also being able to talk about, like, where boundaries would need to, like, is it, is it solid? Is this a gate here? Like, what, what, what is this? Like, what, is it, what does it mean for you if this boundary was crossed or if this boundary became a gate? Um, so what, what's, yeah, what's there? Yeah. Well, I love that you bring up again uh, the boundaries because 59 also is setting the boundaries of where people can penetrate your aura and the other way around. And now you mentioned that. Um, yeah, I would love to know a little bit more about how does it or how do you to uh, do that? How in what topics are the, the boundaries or how do you express these boundaries? Are there boundaries? Sure, totally. So for me, um, like my bad, I'm I'm monogamous. So for me, I would like like her you, her body is mine, her energy is mine. I don't want to share that. That's that sexual energy, you know, that, that that the potent, deep, raw sexual chemistry is is mine. And she's beautiful. And she's got she's a projector. Like she's got the, the energy and the vitality. That's like people just want to be around her. So and there is a there's that 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 sexual chemistry is just natural like it's there and then there's there's a there's a, there's a limit of like well hey like physicality like I, your body i want your body like it's 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 my body as well so for me the boundary is no having sex with other people um and then in that uh like i i encourage her to talk to exes to get completion on whatever's present for her with them so uh, I think it's really important to maintain relationships um, of, of the opposite sex and being transparent about feelings there because there's not always closure. And I feel like in relation, especially when you start a new relationship, this is what I noticed to a lot of my relationships was um, incompleteness in the old relationship just shows up in the new one. And and for me, that would bring up a lot of jealousy. Normally, that would bring up jealousy and anxiety and like, um, like a- avoidance around like no or, or rejection. So I've really been sitting like with that agitation around um, that that's okay. Like it's this is normal. This is my struggle. This is me. And then allowing her to speak to exes to get completion. Like this happened for me. Why didn't you? Why weren't you there for me? Or why didn't this happen? And knowing that there's a foundation that she's chosen me as a partner to be devoted to me as a partner and is holding on to that. No, she, she's going to come back. She'll be back. This is not a, this is not a, she's not running away with this guy to have a chat to like leave the country. She needs to um, feel into her heart and her feelings around what is present for her. And then she just comes back and she tells me whatever's gone on for her. So that transparency is like it's so refreshing. I don't like that ang- if there's any anxiety, I speak to it. If there's anything else, I just speak to it. So um, holding on to that, the, the tension, this starts to corrode the relationship from the inside. So I just allow to in, in the context of boundaries, 
it, the, 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 the one that stands out is like no sex with other people. Um, I feel like I, I'm a live wire of vitality and sexual energy. There's plenty that I can provide. <laughs> and that's, you, know, <laughs> you don't need anyone else. All right. If we, if we, if you really, really need to, then let's have a conversation around it. But right now it, it, there's more. So yeah. And, then, and that's also because, you know, you've been with each other for about a year or more. Just about a year. Yeah. So of course I understand that you kind of feel like you're mine, <laughs> but is it, well, what I what I feel in what you just shared is that you're even for yourself making this boundary kind of flexible flexible because I do feel there is a kind of a fear of losing in it, but wanting to trust the other person because that creates again the intimacy. Because yes. I know from from my own experience that when someone really gives you that freedom in trust you will love the person even more. So even when she would come to you in maybe three years and say like, wow, I really feel attracted to this guy. I would really like to have this physical contact with him because you already build that trust and know that the two of you are one. I'm sure you're gonna be able to say, sure, my love, you can experiment and, and try that. The, the container's there, so yes, yeah, it, it's there. I, I, it's, I definitely see it as it's, I, I, I honor her journey in, in a woman's body in whatever she wants to experience. And for me to, to deny her of that goes against all my principles about in, the individual and respecting the individual. So it's like, it's about, yeah, coming back, exactly what you said. You, you experience this. And you, you tell me what was there for you so I can feel whatever I need to feel, whatever's present for me, whether it's like rejection, inadequacy or celebration. Like, but, you know, I did that. Like I, I, I created this world where she can be the most authentic version of herself. Um, yeah. I feel a lot of healing in that as well. Like you said, when feelings of jealousy and inadequacy would arise it would be something you can talk and share about and again you will create a more close bond than you would have in another relationship yeah yes beautiful beautiful so mm, we've just discussed you know a lot about the sexuality uh we've discussed it in your work in your private life um, but I do feel your 59 has something it wants to say to all the people that are going to watch this, this replay and uh, our conversation. Um, so I would want to ask you if you want to take just a breath or something and, and anything that comes up for you, if you would like to share that. Mm, wow. Okay. Wow. Mm. Thank you, Dorinda. I, 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 okay, all right. I can feel this the, the pressure. Okay, good pressure. It's good. It's good. Okay. Ah. Mm, it, it, it directly relates to sexuality and and giving yourself permission to express what's present for you. Um, and that sexuality, that vitality, like the kundalini, the chi, the prana, all the energy is like it's, it's, it's waiting to be tapped for creativity. It's waiting to be tapped for creation. It's there. And there's so much of it there. And what I've seen systems-wise, like from the church or whatever, like organizations that have kind of shamed sexuality and like not allowed it to exist, um, that it, we, I think there's a... There's an opportunity for an uh, okay, uh, evolution slash revolution to sexuality and being able to do it in a transparent way. So not being secretive and deceitful and this is like a, I mean, voyeurism is a, is a kink, but how we're doing it in a way that's transparent so you can still like get off on it. So like having the, the consent wheel or whatever's present there around like, expressing your wants and needs and 
Um, and it's in, in your body. So it's, it's very important to be in contact with your body, like know what's present, like be able to speak to sensations, like even being able to say, I feel aroused or like I'm attracted to you or there's an energy about you that is very attractive and I want to be around or I want to touch or whatever. This is, and without being able to really being able to own it in, in, in a way so it's not creepy or whatever it is it's like no you know, i find you attractive but there's something about you that i want to mingle and get to know i want to be in your aura whatever that looks like what it is, is experienced for you um yeah that's, that's what's come through anything else will just come from my head yeah <laughs> we didn't want that i wanted to really come from from your sacral and and the you and not the mind so uh thank you because it was beautiful and like you said, a lot of judgment still from the world because sex and sexuality is, I feel, misunderstood. And in religions, like you mentioned, uh, being this, this darkening about it, you know. But if we didn't have it, we wouldn't have human beings. So, <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So totally. Sex. I feel if you're really intimate with someone in a in a physical way and then again when you get to the next level with your aura and your whole presence it's this sacred union it's this this sacred act of creation right and sometimes a baby comes from it and sometimes it doesn't but to unite a male and a female you become what comes up for me is like this the one being that we once were we were androgynous we were the whole we were one and i mm. felt that when you just shared your your inner voice of the 59 thank you thank you and i know what you, i feel what you said in my throat like it feels like there's something stuck in my throat like the polarity like it's how important polarity is and and how we are one right. in in various versions of polarity so yeah i powerful i love that thank you thank you so much um well i don't have any questions anymore because I mm -hmm. felt that our our conversation was already so full and you explained it so beautifully and eloquently. And uh, I want to thank you so much for being so open about, you know, sexuality again is like this, this secretive thing, but you were so open to us to share it. And I really want to honor and thank you for that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for receiving me, Corinda. I, fe I feel so received and just understood and yeah honored so i really appreciate yeah, this conversation thank you yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. because uh we had a I lot like of questions, like i said and and i really feel when we in this safe container with the 59 there are still people that are living in the dark of the 59 i feel and when we come together it's like opening up this this veil of of shame and guilt like you said yes 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 i love it thank you it's perfect you it's perfect you explained it perfectly <laughs> <laughs>